All right, in this video, I'll share with you 10 of the worst Indian habits that make us Indians. Now, before you jump the gun, maybe some of you are new to my channel and say, oh, you're racist and all that. India, Indian passport holder, Baba, I am Indian passport holder. Okay, so being Indian, I can talk about India. And yes, I know, I know our... Um, our Indians will be like, you only speak bad about India. You are uh, anti-Indian, anti-national, anti-this, anti-uncle, grandma, grandpa, whatever. Okay, my channel, I can speak about whatever you like. If you want to talk good about India, you create a, another channel. I I keep it real. I When there's something to celebrate, yeah, I, I do share. Uh, however, there's nothing like highlighting uh, things which need to be improved on. You know, after all, controversy sells, which I'm very sure you know that, I know it. The only reason you would be butthurt is because I am speaking about India being Indian and you can't do anything about it. And the main reason why you will be angry with me is because I'm telling you the truth. Like they say, you know, truth hurts. Okay, so feel free to criticize my face, how ugly I am, yuck, look at his uh, you know, whatever. Oh, only 1,000 views, only 200 views. Oh, he must be dying for views. Eh, say whatever you like. Okay. But feel free to tell me among these 10 points, which of them are wrong. Because um, for those of you, those of us who are Indians know for a fact the 10 points I'm going to speak here, it's reality. Okay. So without further ado, I'm going to give you the 10, uh, 10 of the worst Indian habits. And uh, if I get anything extra, I'll serve it as a bonus. Okay, the first one is very obvious, which, you know, identify us as Indians. And um, I'm also guilty as charged because I never got the proper upbringing or guidance. That is grooming, hygiene and manners. We Indians are very, very notorious for these three things. Um, grooming, if you, <laughs> if you look at an Indian from far, you know he's an Indian. You go to any touristy place, you go anywhere in the world, you just need to look at Indian. You know, uh, it's just the way that they look. It's, I don't know whether it's the oily face, it's the oily hair, it's the uh, f facial hair, the coffee filter, I call it the coffee filter moustache, um, the hair on the chest to show I'm manly or, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but you can clearly make it. And yes, the hairy arms, it, it looks like we, we Indians are uh, descendants from, or we, we are, uh, what do you say, um, you know, giving a uh, audition for Planet of the Apes, Indian version. So, we Indians are very hairy, hairy all over. And with that hair comes a very musky smell. I'm pretty sure wherever you have hair in those areas, after you smell and you take a whiff of it, you know what I'm talking about. So, that musky smell is all over us. And if you do not clean yourself, wash yourself, and on top of that, you know, our diets are very, Indian diets are very curry, very gingery, very garlic, very spicy stuff. And that spice, garlic, or onions, everything oozes out of our pores. And then if you don't uh, uh, give yourself a proper bath or you don't wash yourself uh, and you're outside in the heat, in the humidity, obviously you're going to smell, that pungent smell is going to be there. And uh, if you don't know what it smells like, just travel in a bus or a train or just walk in the crowded streets of Mumbai, Delhi, and you'll know exactly what I mean. So we Indians... Uh, the first one is the grooming challenge. The second one is the hygiene. And the third one is the manners. Oh, goodness gracious. You know, whenever we have these Indian tourists that come here into any any part of the world, our Indians, hey, 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 like this, you know, that is, <laughs> even when they go to a restaurant, uh, restaurant, it's not like, excuse me, it's not polite. It's, hey, waiter, 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 hey, hello, hey, hey, come here. <laughs> so, uh, see, I, I, I think it stems from the fact that, um, there, there has been no proper upbringing. There has not been any etiquette or classes or education in those areas, avenues. And given the fact that Indians have all of a sudden been exposed to a higher purchasing power from being in the four walls of their village or their small little shanty area uh, with their friends, all of a sudden now they can travel anywhere in the world because of purchasing power and the globalization. So they carry their Indian grooming habits, their hygiene, their manners, they take their India with them where they go. And uh, this gives all of us a really terrible bad name. I'll tell you that. It never stops. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you can spot an Indian just by looking. <laughs> you know it's an Indian. From the hair all over to the hair on the arms and all the gold chain. Very loud and brash and eating with the um, 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 and uh, and you know, all the profanity laced words. And 
uh it's a it's a very sad thing in, in fact even uh, indian owners who run businesses here in thailand or various other places the customers that they hate seriously you can ask if you don't believe me just ask any of the indian businessmen the worst customers that they have or the experience are these indian tourists they say we just cannot tolerate them we just cannot bear them it's, it's un, unbearable okay so the first indian habit which uh, i have coupled to three is the bad grooming the bad hygiene and the bad manners okay the second one is our indians now we they, they will complain about oh you're being racist oh you're being sexist oh you're being uh, you are anti this anti that but even though our indians will complain about other people you know treating them like oh it's a racist joke and all that we indians we ourselves are deeply racist how many times below my uh, videos have i got uh, for example uh, you know majority are hindus so they'll say they will call me a hey, you rice bag apparently it seems the poor indians who are there who are hindus or the untouchables you know in the hindu culture they have brahmins who are the upper caste and then you have the lower caste the kshatriyas and the untouchables or whatever so the brahmins are like the elite they can go to temples they can you know, go anywhere and uh, i don't know you can educate me on this and uh, the untouchables were the cleaners or the people who used to do the low level work okay and they were not allowed in temples and they were not allowed to uh, mix with the elite class so in hindus itself there are various hierarchies so now what happens is um, what happened was i think during the uh, you know when the british or the portuguese came and uh, various parts of india they converted them to christianity and uh, it seems i'm not to show one of the strategies which they had was they would offer them food or they would offer them you know kindness they would they would not treat them like untouchables and they would preach the christian doctrine that jesus loves you you're equal in the eyes of god so obviously these people these poor hindus they were like here we have a god who calls us untouchables and here there is another god who says you're equal to me you're my children and here they treat me like shit here they give me food so obviously you will convert when you get kindness and love and compassion so the people who converted they <coughs> they like to be a little rude and say you converted you give up your faith for a bag of rice and uh, they like to call me hey rice bag and i i personally don't mind it i always tell them uh, you know because they are being rude to me i also little rude to them i say i prefer having a bag of rice than having you know cow dung and cow urine so then they get pretty pissed how dare you say that then i tell them baba i just google search on youtube uh, cow urine people are drinking cow urine for healing covid and cow they having bath in cow dung and cow manure because it seems it boosts the immune system one of them even put cow dung on the car because it blocks ultraviolet rays don't take my word on it don't believe me just google search and check and you will find what i'm saying is true so uh, so yeah what i'm saying was uh, they have this habit of being deeply racist uh, they will uh, like for example any any rape any crime anything they will try to identify is he a muslim is he you know and they will always always you if you point out any flaws in india the first thing that they'll say they will segregate he is a muslim he is a islamist he is a uh, they call him what uh, khalistan or they will segregate you based on your um, culture tradition religion they will differentiate and they will try to uh, you know push you away <laughs> they will never identify you as we are indian but you are from south india you are a this you are a that <laughs> <laughs> and um, they have this immensely deep hatred towards uh, muslims um, not all hindus i'm not saying all but the majority and in, over there i'll play the devil's advocate and i'll say that i don't blame them completely because you do have certain segments of the muslim population that do preach you know extremist views yeah, you know in every religion there is but then what happens is they take that one one small sect or example and put blanket statements on everyone and it kind of gives them the reason to treat others like shit uh, in fact you once again google search on youtube or just quickly search even uh, indian farmers who are muslims who don't do anything bad or minding their own business transporting their cows for meat or milk or whatever they will literally beat them and even kill them just because you know they want to brandish their extreme views and then we also have that um, modi's uh, that new that policy that uh, caa citizenship amendment act or the uh, you know all these policies that he had where uh, hindus from pakistan hindus from bangladesh hindus from all other neighboring countries are welcome but not muslims from those areas so it's nothing but clearly a uh, racist kind of an agenda and you will get our hindu intellects politicians who will give you all the justifiable reasons why this is not racist it's not racist now i'm i'm not very much into the politics of this but 
<coughs> the point I'm trying to tell you is they use the racist card when it favors them. Okay, case in point, I'll just give one example is if you, uh, you know, if you point out the Bilkis Banu, you can just search Bilkis Banu uh, incident, they will not acknowledge that that lady who was harmed, raped, brutally, you know, her life was completely destroyed with the injustice, with the BJP kind of supporting these very same people who committed the crime. They gave them garlands, they took photographs, they made them like heroes. So if you highlight this, the only response that I've received until now is, what about the Gujarat riots? Okay, nothing got to do with Bilkis Banu and these rapists. They'll talk of some other incident. And if that doesn't work, then they'll talk of the Mughal era, they'll talk of Nehru, this is a very strange, uh, by the way, illogical argument. They'll speak about Nehru, they'll speak about Akbar, they'll speak about the Mughal Empire, uh, which doesn't make sense. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is the Indian mentality, you know, in that way, is it's it's impossible to talk sense to them because they will use all these kind of baseless, senseless and racist uh, arguments. Number three is our Indian fascination towards free. Oh, anything that is for free. It can be an underwear, it can be a socks, it can be a condom, it can be whatever. Now, I'll admit here, me, me, an Indian, I don't mind free. Even I like free. I don't mind free. Who wouldn't like free? <laughs> However, there is free where you can be classy, free where you can be slightly like, uh, you know, you're not controlling, you're acting like you've never seen before. And there is free to the point of desperation. And what do I mean by the third one? See, if, for example, I were to buy, let's say I'm going to buy the new Samsung phone, Samsung Fold, and... Uh, you have a choice of getting three items for free. And then the fourth one is optional. Okay, four, you can choose among four things. Now, generally, a business-minded guy or someone who is kind of extreme about free, he will take the four, which are by default, and instead of choosing one among the four, he will ask for all the four. I've done that. I'm guilty as charged. Okay, I don't mind free. I like free. But then there is the second one where they act like they never seen something. And I'll give you an example of this. When they go to uh, a five-star hotel. Imagine Indians who have the money to stay in a five-star hotel. They will see soap, shampoo, towels, tissue, pens, uh, pencils, whatever they can see that is, you know, for use, for your convenience. They will take two, three of them and put it in their pocket as if it is meant for them. Uh, the most notorious one is the Bali incident where uh, these tourists, they actually stole, they cleaned up the entire room that they were in from towels to statues to uh, accessories to uh, everything and when they were caught here which will come to the next point when they were caught they didn't apologize they didn't the same they were shouting and screaming okay which is the next point which i'll tell you so they are so shameless that even though it's meant for your convenience they still take it and they take even more and then the the most extreme one is not only this bali incident you can google search bali india is for example, me, I make a lot of videos. I give a lot of free content. I give that for free. Yet, they will still contact me and they'll ask me, please, can you guide me? Please, can you help me? Which is fine. It's okay to ask. But these people who are asking me, they're not poor, huh? by the way. FYI, they are not poor. You're talking of people who are earning $5,000, $10,000 worth of an income, a salary of $10,000, $5,000. Yet, they want my service for free. And they will give me all kinds of excuses. They will say, my mother's sick, my father's sick, I took a loan, I made a bad uh, judgment, today I have no money, please can you help me for free? And like I told you, the salaries that they want or they expect $5,000, $10,000. So <laughs> you're talking to people who can afford a very expensive lifestyle, yet they want it for free. And when I tell them no, they don't stop at that. They keep on keeping on until <laughs> I finally block them. And if I do that or I say no to them, oh, which will come to another point, which I'll tell you. So that level of shamelessness, that is why you have so many tourists who come, they travel first class, they will stay in a five-star hotel, yet, if they can take anything for free, anything from the poorest of the world, they will take it. And I don't know, they take a lot of pride in saying, ah, see, I got it for free. They think it's been uh, a businessman or a hustler. Okay, so the free mentality, very cheap, very unwelcoming, and people don't like it. Number four is, oh, I told you, you know, the Bali incident where that guy, he went to the hotel, he took everything. Now, this is where the next point comes in. Number four is the ego. Now, imagine these people got caught red-handed. Red-handed on, on video, on camera, that they stole the towels in three, four luggages when they opened towels and accessories and whatever, whatever they can take. Um, if they could even take the telephone, they would have taken that. Okay, slippers and shampoo and shampoo bottles. So, once they got caught, now, generally, when you get caught, you apologize. I'm sorry, I, I admit 
I stole. You should have said that. Instead of doing that, the guy started screaming at the hotel staff, including the manager, the people who caught him red-handed. Okay, okay, okay. Don't make big drama. How much? How much money? How much money? I will give you the money. He is still egoistic. He is still with his Indian ego where he still doesn't want to admit. And this is something that people cannot tolerate. In fact, uh, there are so many Indians, they will argue with, even if it's a Rolex showroom or it's a Rolls Royce showroom or it's a VIP lounge, they will talk very, very big. You know what, you, are, you know who I am, you know what I am. And if you actually search who they actually are, don't be surprised if they are, some, they are individuals who earn $200 a month. Not exaggerating. That is how much they earn. Yet, they will talk big. I get so many keyboard warriors who will uh, be anonymous on my channel with fake accounts. Hey, how much are you earning? What are you earning? Only $500 a day. What? Which cheap shit and you look like ugly. And you... So, they comment on my looks. Okay, I look ugly. Can you show me how you look? No, that they will not show. Oh, you're only getting $500 a day. Uh, how much do you get? Oh, that's none of your business. They will comment on my wife. Oh, she looks like an ugly horse. Can you show me how your hot girlfriend or wife looks? No, they will not show. So they have this this kind of uh, ego, which is un, which doesn't have any grounding, which doesn't have any. Uh, it it doesn't make sense. Okay, it just doesn't make sense. And uh, I will put one extra point here. This is an extra like point number five, but we'll put it as four point five, <laughs> which is uh, double standards. Our Indians are infamous for their double standards. I just don't know what it is, but they have one rule for them. They have another rule for you. They have a totally different rule for their friends or their religion or their people. And they have a separate rule for somebody else. Um, like, for example, I'll give you a simple example. Like, let's say someone committed a crime against an Indian Hindu. Okay, girl, Indian Hindu girl, they will shout and scream, she should be killed, eh? that guy should be killed. And, uh, and if it's a Muslim, oh, he should be chopped and this and that, they will scream and shout. I'm just giving as an example. However, if the same crime, same crime, rape or whatever murder was done to a Muslim girl by a Hindu, listen, just, just listen. First, I told you, a, a girl, a girl, Hindu girl, a Muslim guy attacked her. They'll have very violent punishment. They'll expect very violent punishment. But if the girl was a Muslim and the boy was Hindu, they would say, oh, she tried to trap him, love jihad. Oh, why are you highlighting only about India? Actual logic, you will read these statements below my video. Why are you only talking bad about India? Just because one rape took place. What? USA, you know how much of rape happens in Norway? You know, every six times there's a six uh, rapes per day. And then the best one, what about Pakistan? What about Pakistan? Why don't you talk about Pakistan? So they have this double standards where one rule applies for them. Another rule applies for someone else. And if they don't like the individual or don't like the religion, it's totally different. Like I gave you the example of Bilkis Banu, right? Muslim lady who got raped by 11 Indian Hindu men of the BJP party. They had garlands put on them. They even fought for them to be uh, released and uh, treated like heroes in the media. Can you believe? Seriously. Because she was a Muslim woman. Had it been a Hindu woman and the, the men would be Muslim. Take it from me. Different rule entirely. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Ah, so the next point, point number five. This one is also very well known in our India. Our Indians, huh, they will never mind their own business. They have to interfere in other people's business. What is his wife doing? What is his daughter doing? What is his husband doing? Or, sorry, what is her husband doing? What about them? What about you? How much are you earning? What are you doing? Where did you go? They have to know about everyone. They will even want to know how much are you earning? What are you earning? Who are you? What did you accomplish? But they will never talk about themselves. Like, how much are you earning? Like, they criticize me. Hey, you look bloody ugly. Look at your ugly face. Oh, why don't you show me your face? Oh, your, your you know, earning capacity. Why don't you show me your... When, when you ask them that, why should I? Why should I? It's confidential. Who are you? So, they, they have this tendency where they want to know about everyone else. And they will talk bad about everyone else. But you can't talk about them. And where it becomes really unbearable is where they will not spare even the... Women and women folk, the mothers, the daughters, the sisters, some of our Indian men are so disgusting that they will not spare these. Like they'll always look at other men's daughters, sisters, women, you know. But the minute it comes to their children, their family, no, oh, you have to respect them. Oh, you have to be protective about them. <coughs> anyway, point number six. Uh, when you point at their flaws or when you point at their faults, they will never ever admit, yes, we are wrong. 
and if they do admit it they'll always come with a clause okay rape happens everywhere why you know why are you pointing only this why don't you talk of the good like if you talk about let's say for example i highlight an incident that took place from the news oh, why don't you talk of the good of india why don't you talk about we are number 1 the highest uh, gdp or uh, we went to the dark side of the moon or what about satya nadella or sundar pichai they are the ceos we indians are running the world uh, what about uh, what is it uh, um, the guy from the uk rishi sunak ha ah, he is running ha ah, and you can put another point here <laughs> when you achieve something good they will associate themselves like rishi sunak when he became the <coughs> prime minister are he is indian indian name rishi sunak it's indian hindu however when he became unpopular and he got ousted the narrative was his roots are pakistani he is not actually indian his roots are pakistani so you see how they differentiate double standards so it's if something bad happens they will never admit i i apologize we are wrong very rarely okay and they will always deflect it with their favorite thing what about pakistan what about these islamists okay number 8 uh this one drives me mad i can't tolerate it when they want something from you they'll be very sweet and very nice in fact uh, so enticing you can't even see it they'll be very good huh? they'll be very kind to you very nice very well behaved you cannot uh, resist they are that charming that is only when they want something and you can see this when they talk to girls especially women uh, they'll be very sweet very loving very charming oh i love you you know you are this you are that very nice but the minute they get what they want let's say for a girl they wanted sex they got sex or um, they wanted to borrow money from you and you lend it to them or uh, let's say they wanted you to recommend them to a contact of yours or give help them get a job until they get what they want they'll be fine after they get what they want they'll be very indifferent to you they'll treat you like crap they'll be very cold very calculative and in some cases they will even become your biggest enemy there are so many examples of even rel- relatives where they help them get a job in a company and help them get at a good position and then when you try to ask them for help or something in return they will treat you as if like you're a worthless human being as if you're a piece of shit like hey you didn't do any favors for me i worked it by myself you just entered you so this two faced nature where when they get what they want they change the tone of their voice or uh, the way they are it's horrible and like i told you in my case when they want a free consultation or they want a free resume or they want a free service very nice but if i say no to them oh they will be unbearably they will become my biggest enemies for some reason number 9 every indian when he reaches out to you means not someone that you've known for a long time but when they reach out to you you can be rest assured they have an agenda they have a, not just an agenda they have a hidden agenda which they will not tell you what it is they have something in their mind and uh, the faster you come to know what it is the better it is but they will never reveal what their agenda is they will say it's like the art of war oh it's being business minded no they just want to take advantage of you they just want to get their benefit and they just want to take it steal your idea steal whatever and then just dump you off i'll give you a good example a long story short delhi uh guy i i do not know the name of the company because it was nearly 11 years ago 12 years ago meritronics or futuretronics or something like that delhi guy very rich so he he and i kind of verbally agreed on a deal whereby i would do a couple of events for him in delhi and uh, he you know hotel stay five star travel first class and money including you know some total a uh, bit of the profits so he said uh, loy you know loy loy you know the sky's the limit you are going to see we are going to you know big big talk here okay sun moon and stars he was he give me so much of bluff that sharukh khan and amitabh bachchan how much 40 crore 60 crore will throw like this loy we will make it happen so uh, you know i was like oh, okay businessman you know he is actually rich so we had to sign the dotted line and uh, he said loy i'm giving you my word my word is my bond and i was a little bit of an idiot you could say those days so <sighs> for the next two weeks every single day we met every single day and uh, he was busy taking concepts ideas uh, and uh, strategizing what should be purchased how should we keep things what is allocation i trained his staff and uh, it was agreed for being paid a thousand dollars per day okay so i was doing the ground work two weeks before on the day i had to leave to delhi from dubai the day i had to leave and i'm trying to call him until now whenever i called him easily accessible now when i called him his phone was not picking up 
I'm supposed to leave that day. Huh? I call him, call him, call him. He's not picking up. And finally, I wonder like, what the hell is going on? And so then I try his right hand guy, and the right hand guy says, "Oh, Lloyd, no, we forgot to tell you. There's been a change of plans, and uh, uh, he had to go for an emergency leave, and uh, we we will keep you in the loop and all." He didn't tell me that he cancelled my flight that day, my flight booking, everything he had showed me before. And uh, like I said, long story short, he had actually taken all my ideas, taken all my concepts, gone ahead with the event, got some other cheap guy to do everything that I could, that I was supposed to do, implemented every idea of mine, and uh, never paid me a dime for it. And he claimed that ideas are for free. Ideas are for free. What great did he do? He's talking about me. He never paid me for those two weeks, for almost eight, I think eight to twelve hours of work that I did with him, the training that I gave. Nothing. So, and remember, he's a very rich, well-to-do guy. He didn't have to do all this. But well, uh, the only saving grace, the happy twist in the end, was his company got shut down because you know he was doing this with literally everyone. So his company got shut down. The products and all that, everything flopped. And yeah, he got you know people say karma. I don't believe in karma, but he got what he deserved. And uh, the last one is, you know, the concept of the same example that I gave you. Indians have this mentality where, when they get into business, there is no such thing as win-win. For some strange reason, there is no win-win. There is win-lose, and the only way they can win is if you lose. And the only way it's a good deal is if you suffer. If they can squeeze out the last drop of blood from you, only then it's a success. Otherwise, it's a failure. That is how the Indian mentality is. And uh, I think I've seen enough and more of this to understand that uh, it's a sad thing. Now, understand this much: this is not all Indians, but when you are talking of a population of one billion, even twenty percent, if you follow the eighty-twenty rule, twenty percent is two hundred million of one billion. And uh, if you actually look, India's population is what one point four billion, whatever. It's nearly the population of the United States. If you take just the twenty percent, and I can assure you, it's much more than twenty percent. It's almost eighty percent of our Indians. They live in this the law of the jungle kind of a thing. So they don't know how to be nice, and they they know that if I'm nice, someone will eat me alive. So they have to be bad, and they have to be evil, and they have to be. It's either you live or I live, one of the two. You know, so survival of the fittest. So that is why I guess our Indians are the way they are. And uh, sadly, because of this global phenomenon, and uh, now they have purchasing power, they travel around the world. All they end up doing is, you know, making a fool out of themselves, thinking that nobody is going to talk. But all it takes is one bad apple to ruin the name of everyone else, and that is exactly the sad tragedy. What is happening today? They have so many Indians traveling so many places, and all they do is leave these bad, bitter memories of being stingy. Of you know, in Thailand they have this one person drink uh, eight eight Indians drinking one coke. Sharing its straws, you know, bargaining with uh, even uh, you know sex workers. What is the last price? Last price. Okay, me and my friend for free. We we'll do uh, buy one get three like that. You know all that bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> you can let me know what do you think in the comments below. You agree, disagree, and uh, yeah, as usual, another wonderful video to share with you. <laughs> Feel free to comment down below. This is me signing off. You guys take care. Bye.